Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going to be talking about government intervention. Now in microeconomics, we often talk about the problems that government intervention can make within a perfectly competitive market without any externalities. Now in this unit, we are focusing on the problems that can exist because of market failures. And then government intervention can actually create more efficient outcomes. If after watching this video, you still need a little more help, head over to ReviewEcon.com and pick up the Total Review Booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics AP exams. Let's get into the content. Now first, let's talk about the economic reason for government intervention. Ideally, government intervention is going to improve efficiency. That means it is going to alleviate some of the market failures that you're learning about in this unit. One of those market failures, of course, is a natural monopoly, which underproduces, overcharges, and creates deadweight loss. Through properly designed government interventions, we could reduce or maybe even eliminate that deadweight loss. Antitrust legislation is one of those regulations that could be used to help alleviate some of those market failures. In this case, we are trying to promote competition, prevent the formation of monopolies, and prevent collusion with oligopolies. That is going to limit monopoly power, both with monopolies themselves and with oligopolies. That should increase the quantity produced, decrease the prices charged, and prevent that market failure that exists when price is greater than marginal cost that we see with monopolies and oligopolies. The next government regulation we're going to look at is price floors. Here we have a perfectly competitive market with a supply curve and a demand curve, and we're going to put a price floor on that market. Remember, the price floor goes above equilibrium if it's going to be effective. If the price floor is below equilibrium, it will be non-binding and the market will seek the equilibrium of PE and QE that we see marked here. But if we have a price floor that is above equilibrium, it is going to cause the quantity demanded to be less than the quantity supplied and we are going to have a surplus. That means QD down there is the only quantity that's going to be sold, and we're going to have, as a result of this government intervention, a creation of deadweight loss. So with an effective price floor in a perfectly competitive market, we're likely to see a decrease in efficiency as a result of this government intervention. If, on the other hand, we have a price ceiling that goes below equilibrium, if it's effective, then that is going to cause a shortage. The quantity demanded is going to be greater than the quantity supplied, and again, the quantity that is sold will be lower than the equilibrium quantity and at that lower quantity we will have that triangle of dead weight loss. Again the government intervention has created inefficiency here. Next let's talk about natural monopolies. A natural monopoly is a case where a government intervention of a price ceiling could actually reduce dead weight loss and improve efficiency. Here we have an unregulated natural monopoly. Remember, a natural monopoly always captures economies of scale and has a constantly downward sloping average total cost curve through the relevant range. Real world examples of a natural monopoly include the local power company that provides electricity within your home and the infrastructure from our railroads. Now, if this natural monopoly is unregulated, we are going to see a low quantity of QU and a high price of PU. That's going to give us this massive triangle of dead weight loss. Now with a price ceiling, the government could actually limit that dead weight loss. If the government were to impose what is called a fair return price, that would mean that the price would be equal to the average total cost curve. We would find that where the demand curve intersects that ATC. And if the government did that, we would see QF, that's the fair return quantity, and PF is the fair return price. So with this government price ceiling, we would have a higher quantity produced and a lower price as well but we still aren't allocatively efficient because the price is still above the marginal cost. And as a result, we still have dead weight loss, but it is a much smaller triangle of dead weight loss that we see there. Now, if the government wanted to eliminate all dead weight loss, they could put a price ceiling at the allocatively efficient point, And that would be where the price equals the marginal cost. There would be our price at marginal cost. And we have the QA as the allocatively efficient quantity. Now there is no dead weight loss, but you'll notice the average total cost curve is above the price at that quantity being produced now. And so we will have this rectangle of economic loss for this natural monopoly. So if this natural monopoly is going to stay in business, it must be compensated for that economic loss. And so the government is going to have to provide a lump sum subsidy if this business is going to remain open while producing the allocatively efficient quantity. Of course, this is just one way to draw a natural monopoly. There is this one right here where the marginal cost curve does eventually intersect the average total cost curve. 
And here's one here where the average total cost curve and marginal cost curve never intersect, but the marginal cost curve is downward sloping. So you could see any of these three ways of drawing the natural monopoly. If you are practicing drawing a natural monopoly, choose which one your teacher prefers most. Next, we're going to talk about the government imposing an effective minimum wage in a perfectly competitive labor market. Here we have a labor market with a fairly inelastic demand curve. If we put an effective minimum wage above equilibrium, that will cause some level of unemployment. That's the difference between the quantity of workers willing to work, the QS, and the number of workers that businesses are willing to hire, QD, at that minimum wage. And so even with an inelastic demand curve, we do see some level of unemployment in a perfectly competitive labor market. If, on the other hand, we have an elastic demand curve for labor within a perfectly competitive labor market, then an effective minimum wage that is above equilibrium will cause a large amount of unemployment. And so an effective minimum wage in a perfectly competitive labor market will have a bigger negative impact if the demand for labor is elastic and a smaller negative impact if the demand curve is inelastic. Of course, labor markets are not, if ever, perfectly competitive. Sometimes they could be more like a monopsony. Here's a monopsony graph that you should have already learned in Unit 5. Monopsonies are going to underhire and underpay workers. And as a result, we're going to have some deadweight loss without any government intervention. Now, in this case, an effective minimum wage could increase efficiency. If we put a minimum wage at the intersection of the supply and demand, that would give us this higher quantity of workers hired. Workers would both be paid more and hired more. And if the government is able to get this minimum wage just right, it would eliminate the deadweight loss. Next, we're going to talk about taxes and subsidies. Here we have a perfectly competitive market. And as you should remember, a tax on this market is going to shift that supply curve, the vertical distance of the tax. That's going to give us a higher price that buyers pay and a lower price that sellers get after they've paid the tax. We also have a new lower tax quantity. And as a result of this government intervention, we have dead weight loss. It's inefficient if there weren't any externalities. Now, if we do have externalities, in this case, a negative externality, the unregulated market is going to produce QE right there. The allocatively efficient or socially optimal quantity will be QO right there. Since the free market is not going to be producing that quantity, we are going to have some dead weight loss unless we get some government intervention to improve efficiency. Now, if the government were to impose a per unit tax that is equal to the vertical distance between those two curves, it's going to eliminate the dead weight loss because it will shift that supply curve, the vertical distance of that tax, merging that supply curve with the marginal social cost. And then we will actually get that new after tax quantity as being that socially optimal quantity. Now, when it comes to subsidies, it would cause dead weight loss if there is no externality, but eliminate dead weight loss if there's a positive externality. Here we have a graph with a positive externality because the marginal social benefit is greater than the marginal private benefit. And there is our socially optimal quantity. And we have this triangle of dead weight loss. If we put a per unit subsidy that is equal to the vertical distance between those two curves, it's going to shift our demand curve over and that will give us our allocatively efficient quantity of QO and that would eliminate or dead weight loss. So the last thing we're going to do is talk about lump sum and per unit taxes and subsidies and how they impact individual firms. And we're first going to focus on per unit taxes and subsidies. That means that the firm either pays a tax for each unit of output they produce, or they get paid a subsidy by the government for each unit they produce. Those taxes and subsidies are going to shift the average total cost curve and marginal cost curves up when it's a tax and down when it's a subsidy. If we have a per unit tax on this perfectly competitive firm, it's going to shift that marginal cost and average total cost curve upward, and that's going to decrease the profit maximizing quantity of output. If we have a per unit subsidy, on the other hand, it will shift both the average total cost curve and marginal cost curves downward. And again, we're going to see a change in the quantity of output. This time, it's an increase. And if we make those changes with a monopoly graph, we have a per unit subsidy here that's going to increase the profit maximizing quantity and decrease the profit maximizing price as a result of the average total cost curve and marginal cost curve shifting downward. If we have a per unit tax, on the other hand, it's going to shift both of those curves upward. The profit maximizing quantity is going to decrease and the price is going to increase. Now, if we have lump sum subsidies and taxes, that means that the government is charging a flat amount for a tax, regardless of how many units of output the firm produces, or the government could be receiving a flat amount in the form of a subsidy just because they are a producer. But again, it doesn't matter how many units of output they produce. And with lump sum subsidies and taxes, there is no change in the quantity of output 
or the price. And that's because only the average total cost curve is going to be moving and not the marginal cost. So if we have a lump sum tax charged to this perfectly competitive firm, it only shifts that average total cost curve upward and doesn't change the profit maximizing quantity. And if we have a lump sum subsidy, that average total cost curve is going to fall. But again, no change to the price or the quantity. And on the monopoly graph, the average total cost curve will shift upward with a lump sum tax and it will shift downward with a lump sum subsidy. But either way, that profit maximizing price and quantity isn't going to change. And there you have it. That's everything you need to know about government intervention in all the different markets that you are likely to see on your next AP exam. If you wanna practice this with the 2017 number three microeconomics exam question, this is one of those curveballs that show up on the AP exam every once in a while that take all of the concepts and put them together in a new way. I suggest you check it out to see the impact of government intervention. That's it for now. I'll see y'all next time.